The UCLA Quality of Life Index indicates this past week that over half of L.A. County residents have considered or know someone within their family who are thinking about leaving California as a result of the cost of living. Zeb Yaroslavsky is a former supervisor of the County of Los Angeles. He's now the director of the Los Angeles Initiative at the Luskin School of Public Affairs at UCLA. Thank you very much for joining us. Good to be back. Thanks. So let's talk about this survey. Uh, we know that in the past surveys, you've done it several years, uh, cost of living has been a big problem. The cost of rent, the cost of housing, it's gotten worse. Yeah, it's gotten worse every year. The cost of living has been the, the category that people are least satisfied with in Los Angeles County. And the single biggest factor in cost of living is the cost of housing. Far greater than taxes or gasoline prices is the cost of housing. And it's not going to get any better anytime soon. Well, I hope it is. Uh, it looks like it's plateauing a little bit. It, the rate of decline has, has uh, slowed, so I hope it plateaus. There's a lot of construction of housing going on in this city. Most of it is market rate, so it's not going to address directly address the affordability crisis. But uh, there, there's been a lot of legislation, both at the local and at the state level, to encourage more uh, residential development, and uh, it's beginning to have an impact. Senate Bill 50, we talked with the Speaker of the California State Assembly a moment ago. Senate Bill 50 is a bill that would require city, big foot cities on zoning, where it comes, comes to transit. Now the, the Culver City Station, Universal Station here uh, outside our studios, and that you would be allowed, regardless of what your zoning says, allowed to build um, you know, four, five, six story seven apartment buildings, yeah. seven or eight, high rise density development. The argument from the state senators behind this bill, Scott Weiner, who was on last week, uh, is that, listen, this, we need something drastic because we need three million units and we want people to live near transit. What well, do you think of that idea? First of all, the city of Los Angeles, and that's where I come from and that's where I governed for 40 years, city and county of Los Angeles, has transit oriented development proposals and, and mechanisms that they are implementing as we speak. Uh, the Exposition Light Rail line has a, a specific plan that encourages more density along the line near stations. The problem is when we talk about transit-oriented development, when people think of transit, they think of uh, uh, mass transit, they think of the subway, they think of the light rail line. But this bill, Wiener's bill, extends to virtually every bus line in the L.A. basin. So it's not just the red line station outside Universal City. It's also the bus stop at Melrose and Gardner, uh, which is a very middle-class area uh, with uh, no big uh, job magnet there. Uh, and so every bus stop, any, any single family neighborhood within a quarter mile of a bus stop would be rezoned for multiple family development. Now, it's an overreach. The Wiener Bill is an overreach, and I think most people understand that. Uh, the, what's needed in Los Angeles has exceeded its state-imposed housing uh, goals uh, for every year, uh, for the last several years. This last year, in 2018, Los Angeles approved 27,000 new apartment units, the single biggest a uh, number of approved housing units since 1981. Right. But so it's working. Yes. Well, you have the state routinely asks local governments, what's your housing plan and what are you building? And for years, they've given them a housing plan but yeah. never built it. No, that's not true. That's a, 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 Los Angeles may have, but plenty of other cities. Well, that's why the state is I'm suing not, Huntington Beach. I'm, I'm not, well, that, that may be, and I'm not familiar with Huntington Beach. I, I live in Los Angeles, and the problem with the Wiener Bill is it treats every city the same although the most recent version of the bill exempts right. some small affluent cities. So if you want to create uh, affordable housing, don't exempt the affluent cities. Don't exempt Beverly Hills or, or, or Tiburon up in Marin County. Treat everybody the same. He doesn't treat everybody the same. He's made value judgments and political judgments. So there's got to be a more intelligent way to do it, not with a meat axe, but with a scalpel. And, uh, and I'm hopeful that, that the legislature will come to its senses. If not, uh, they can, on their watch, they can say they've destroyed cities and communities up and down the state of California. We don't need to do that. It's an overreach. There's a middle ground, and uh, he's not interested in the middle ground because he's carrying the water uh, for an industry that stands to benefit. Remember, we talked with Scott Weiner last week, so you're sort of answering some of the things that uh, you, uh, you saw in that program. I watched it. Right. Uh, so, uh, all right. Final question, can we at least agree this has to be addressed? Absolutely. Because there is a, a generational issue here. Young people can't afford property here. Yeah, well, young people, people who are of middle and low income, uh, renters, those are the ones, people in the who are what we call in the survey the struggling group, the, about 35% of the people of L.A. County who are struggling economically. Those are the people who are on the bubble, and those are the people we ought to be focused on. 
not on people who are coming into town to take high-tech jobs at $150,000 or $200,000 a year who can pay this you know, market rate housing, but the people who are leaving town. Yeah, and, and it's a complicated thing. It's not, there's no silver bullet for this. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution. We have, a, uh, in Los Angeles, the centers concept. That's how this city developed over the last half century. We have centers, Century City, Westwood, Downtown, Hollywood, Universal City. Those are centers, and there are others. Uh, the, if you have centers, you have to have non-centers. You have high-density neighborhoods, you have mid, uh, uh, middle-sized density areas, and you have single-family neighborhoods. You don't, with one broad brush, destroy all of that. That's, that's, that's suicide. Uh, it, from a land-use point of view, it's uh, Angelino Heights, the, most, uh, the first historic preservation zone in Los Angeles, uh, with the highest concentration of 19th century Victorian homes. Nobody in their right mind would want to raise that. It's a, less than a quarter mile from Sunset Boulevard. Sunset Boulevard, according to state law, is considered a high-frequency bus corridor. You would raise that neighborhood, and there are plenty of HPOZs around Southern California that would be similarly impacted. It's, it's wrong. It needs to be done. They, they approved this bill the other day without even having the text of the bill in front of them, the, the committee that, that heard it. Not one member of that committee, except for Scott Weiner, knew what was in that bill. So there's a lot wrong with the, with the process. There's a lot wrong with the substance. And it, it should be, uh, all the stakeholders ought to be at the table. Seven years, Lasky, former member of the L.A. County Sup Board of Supervisors uh, with the Luskin School at UCLA. Thank you very much. It's a for pleasure to be here. The pleasure is always mine. Thanks for, having, thanks for coming. We'll have some final comments after this.